Today on Pragyan, we have someone who has a very special place in my life. And you will know why when you hear the podcast. She is Tanya Manik Talla. She needs a very short intro because you probably already know her or have seen her work. Tanya is most well known for her role Ishita in the show Flames. But my personal favorite is her role as Lata in A Suitable Boy. But for me, she is just Tanya, my dear friend, little sister, someone who keeps reminding me of the importance of compassion. She inspires me with her humility, her kindness, and her courage to be herself every day, no matter what. Today I speak with her about her meditation journey and why she continues to meditate, even on her film sets, by the way. What is her higher purpose in life and how meditation helps her get closer to it every day? How she deals with heartbreak and her advice for me? Gratitude and family values. So scoot over and listen to the podcast. I think for me, when I met you the first time and we spent a long chunk of time together was in Kana, uh, you know, at the Heartfulness Meditation Center in Hyderabad. And I think for me, what I took away uh, when I spent those 10, 15 days we spent together was just the genuineness, the humility, and the absolute openness that you have to receive everyone. And, you know, like, through those 15, 20 days, you know, there were lots of young people around. I think 12,000 youth had uh, gathered there, and, you know, you were one of the speakers. And I could see that in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, no matter where you went, you received so much love, and people wanted to give you that love. But more importantly, you were available for them, no matter what you were doing, uh, whether you were eating a meal or whether you were walking from one place to the other. And I think I, think I took a lot away from that and also felt extremely inspired in the way that, you know, you've done so much in your life, you've achieved so much in your life. And of course, there's a long, long way to go. And I'm sure you're going to achieve much more with the values that you have. Um, but it inspired me to see that there's so much uh, humility and so much compassion. Because for me, I find it difficult to connect with people the way you did. And you were so vulnerable and you were so open. So I think a lot for me to learn. Uh, but uh, coming back, you know, today we, I really want to talk about, of course, the meditation and, and your practice and things like that. And similar to me, you were also born in the system, uh, you know, where you sort of inherited this heartfulness meditation. Um, and, you know, I know your grandparents meditated, your parents meditate as well. But I'm sure just like how it happened to me, where in my teens, I sort of had my own journey yeah. where I wanted to go back and see, does this really work for me? though my parents and I have grown up in it, but do I really want to do this and make it the value in my life? So just tell me a little bit about what was your journey for you. And I know you continue to meditate and use it as an anchor. So, you know, one is you inherit it, but one is when you continue doing it means it's given you something. So I really want to sort of understand that and we'll get into more stuff later on. Okay, I will get to that. But first of all, I want to talk about how... You were saying all these things about me, but honestly, I can, the way I learn from you, because I, and I am, I'm not just making this up, I'm not, I'm not just saying it, because the way you would greet people and you would go out of your way to make sure the other person is comfortable, you are my guardian over yeah. there, okay? you are my assigned person. What so I was mean? guest services, I was basically yeah. her <laughs> spock for the event, so you know, I was her guest services, yeah. But from being, you really became my person because I was constantly looking for you. Because you just made me feel so included. And I don't think that is something that we talk about enough. Because whatever the other person gives is what you reciprocate. So I got that from you, which is why I reciprocated that. And you always had this energy around you that you're always available to talk. You're very approachable. And you have this very, I don't know, you have this smile that just makes me feel like it'll be okay. I'm, I'm okay. So see that that laugh, it, it makes it just lights up the room and I'm I you I guess we have that in common. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you no matter who the person is in front of you, what how old they are, they might be a young, like a toddler, somebody or somebody very senior. But you would talk to them in the same way that you treated the kids as adults and you treated the adults as as people, not as somebody, you know, like, oh, okay, maybe, like, I have to go out of my way to make sure that they feel respected. Because you just exude that. So that, I felt, was so, so nice and so humbling about you that 
no matter what you were going through, no matter what was going on inside, you never let the other person see that. And you you were present. And I don't wow. think that we, yeah, so credit goes to you. So no, no, thank, thank you. you. That's, that. I, I love this uh, opening <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah. yes. and, uh, but now coming back to meditation. So I know you, um, like you said, that we are both born into a family where we were already born into the system. But... Um, even in my this the last visit that I had in uh, in Kana in August, that was when I was actually you know reworking on this thing, on on heartfulness and and on finding my way back to it because even though I was born into it and my family obviously they they follow it very li- religiously so for me it was always something that was present so I never really knew the value of it on and or maybe I just didn't know how much it affected me because I just felt like it was there so I took it for granted for most of my life and um, I did not think it was I, I I there was only one thing that my parents ever asked of me and and that was that you know do your meditation regularly yeah which made me um, which made me question a lot of things like hey, they never asked me for anything why why does this matter to me ma- matter to them so much that I do it and uh, my brothers have been very consistent with their practice so like you have two people in the family, you know, two of the kids who do it so religiously. <laughs> yeah. so why do you want me to do it? And they're like, hey, see, we don't, we've never asked you for anything and we don't lose on anything if you do not. So you find your own thing and you, you find what works for you. So I did not, I did not meditate for the longest time. I, I mean, I would always, I would do my prayers. I would be in a conversation with master, like intrinsically where I would, I mentioned this to you that I would always be talking to him in my head you know that regarding whatever decisions I had to make or you know whatever I was going through but um, meditation I lost track of because I felt like in the end I have to make my own decisions and I don't need anybody else to tell me because I was in that rebellious phase that I'm going to figure it out on my own but I forgot that sometimes you need help sometimes you just need that anchor where things can get too much and you tend to get overwhelmed by a lot of things mm-hmm. and you, you can get lost in all of this, all of the chaos that's happening outside. So how do you find yourself in the, in the midst of all of this? Because uh, you can't rely, you shouldn't, I mean, I, I, see, I see it as that, that you cannot rely on external factors. You, in the end, have to come back to yourself. So how do I come back to myself? Mm-hmm. And that is where I found meditation again, that no matter what was going on outside, this was the one thing that I had in my control. So... When I, when I took charge of myself again, is when I found that this, I, this is meditation. This yeah. is meditation for me that I don't necessarily need to be in a, tran- in a tranquil zone where, you know, I have to have my eyes closed and uh, I need to uh, bre- focus on my breathing. That de- definitely does help. But when I'm in that zone where my, I'm letting my heart speak, that is my meditation for me. And when I'm really willing to listen to that voice, because sometimes the, the voice outside becomes too loud and everything else goes on mute. So, so incredibly when, said. Yeah. <laughs> so when I, I, I could really listen to that voice, that for me became my meditation. I think when in all these visits that I've had to Kana since, I am still trying my trying to find my way back to meditation and how to make it, my, how to make my sadhana a more regular practice in my routine. So Master would always tell me that. Um, when I would get too overwhelmed again, I, I, and I would, I know, you know, you want quick solution, you want yes. quick fixes. So I was, I, I would be like, Master, I need, I, what do I do with this? And he always tells me that this, I can't tell you what to do. There, there, you, you cannot rely on somebody else to be accountable for your actions. And I realized that's what I was doing. That by, if I put that on him, then it becomes his responsibility to work it all out. And I can very conveniently get myself out of it by saying that. Um, Master but no, it is not on him. I need to make my own decisions, and he can only do so much. He's given me all so much already. And meditation is other much or kya denge with my sadhana. What else could he ever give me? So, this is the only thing I can ever work on, and that, that is how he helps me. So, finding that voice inside of you is what I think meditation has become for me, and I, I, I think I am coming back to that now. Yeah, no, amazing. So, um, you know, I want to double click on that and ask you, I'm sure you've had specific incidences in your life or uh, where you've written to him this long email, 
and uh, you know just for folks who are listening to us when you when you refer to master you're basically talking about the global guide of heartfulness who right now is is kamlesh patel um and i and and i know you write long emails i do the same <laughs> uh because you know we're always looking for answers but mm-hmm. we're looking for answers external of us and like you very rightly pointed out you know you have to find a way to hear and listen to that voice so help me sort of narrate an incident when you did this and how you worked through it because i'm very curious okay so um I've written to master multiple times. So first, I mean, when I w- was initiated into the system, it was uh, Charlie G was uh, the guide, and I used to write emails to him. And um, but th- at that time, he was also a kid, so it was never about. For me, those were also like they were still like you no know, life-defining moments mm-hmm. for me. But uh, it wasn't ever anything that you know that really truly in the longer run would matter. But I remember this one instance when Daji had already become the president. Um, and i was um i had just finished my graduation and um uh, my siblings had moved uh, abroad for their higher studies or for different things my friends were all going away and i felt like i had to do the same thing because i felt so alone i have i've been very dependent on my siblings for you know moral support mm-hmm. or just mental support so um when i felt like my support system had gone away i felt extremely alone extremely lost and to top of all of that everybody i knew was going away but there was this doubt in my head where i wasn't sure if i wanted to do this be- because of my own decision and my own wants or because i felt alone mm-hmm. and um, and i think that was one time when i wrote to master and i i and i wrote to him and i, I told him that i i everybody i have loved or cherished has gone away and i think i i think i have to do the same thing but i'm not sure if i'm doing this out of loneliness or it's because of a, something i really want to do and uh, i also mentioned whether i should you know because it's the four of us now three of us had already moved away so it was just me with my parents so i wasn't sure if leaving them here uh was a good thing or and but i wanted to be selfish in that moment i i thought that that is what i needed i'm sorry yeah and um i wrote to master regarding this and i i got a reward from him saying that there is nothing greater that you can do except than uh, than serve your parents so i would suggest that you stay here with them but me being me i did not heed to that advice and i started <laughs> applying and i was like no i i i need to go and i never told anybody about the response that master had given me because if i told them that master told me to stay they would have never never allowed me to go i totally so, get that <laughs> so um i started my application process and um i i got into the university that i wanted to into the course that i wanted to so i was all set i was applying for my visa and uh, my visa came my tickets were getting done everything was getting like you know for me it was on track and then i got a call from my friend from my uh, college saying that you know i want you to come in for this audition and i'd given up acting by that time i was like I was I have faced too many rejections I don't think I can go through that again I because I felt very frail I felt very fragile I felt like I would break if I you know if I go through that again so I said I kept you know delaying it I was like I'm sorry I can't I can't I can't but he's like he just he kept insisting on me showing up one day mm-hmm. so I showed up and um, I met an extremely wonderful person over there and he was very kind because he could see that i was hesitant i was tired and he could see that i wasn't prepared so he's like hey, do you want to come in to audition another day and that was the casting director the lipso and um, i said yes sir if you could please let me you know just audition one more time and he said okay cool um, come in next week and i went in um, with zero expectations again hoping i mean not hoping but expecting to be rejected i did the audition and uh, i was like okay theek hai it's okay even if it doesn't work out I have my track set out for me. I'm going to move away, and um, I didn't hear back from him. So my tickets were done. Everything was done, and then he calls me up. Um, this is, I think, May, April, April, and he calls me. Which year? The, um, this is 2019. Okay. April 2019, and he says that uh, Mira Nair, the director, wants to do a Skype call with you, and I am like. she <laughs> and uh, then i get on a skype call with her and she is talking to me and um, she really genuinely wants to know me but i'm like okay this still doesn't mean anything okay tanya don't get your hopes up 
<laughs> and uh, I, I mean, the Skype calls went on. Then she came to Delhi to audition me. And at that time, my grandfather was very ill. He was admitted in the ICU. And I hadn't told my parents that I auditioned for something because my dad was never really um, into the whole acting thing. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he thought it was a phase I would grow out of. Sorry, Appa. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, then I told my ma and uh, she was like, Ki, if it's for a day, just go. And because you, if you've committed to something, then you follow through it. So I went, I showed up, and uh, I told Miradi about my situation. And she was like, I am so sorry. Thank you for giving me your time. Um, we'll see what happens. And um, then after that, um, I didn't hear back from her mm -hmm. for till like June 23rd. And then she calls me and she tells me that you are my Lata. So and sweet. I, and I'm like, I'm very happy, but I'm at the same time, like, my tickets are done for July. <laughs> I am supposed so to So you're leave. conflicted. Yeah. So in my head, I'm, I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I tell my sister about this. And she's like, are you an idiot? Are you crazy? You have to do this. Mira Naya once said that she wants to work with you and you are willing to, you are going to turn her down. And then I tell my family. And Appa is like, no, you fought with us so much because you wanted to go and now your tickets are done and you now you say that you don't want to do it. And um, I'm like, no, it's not that. But I just think that I want to give it one shot. And uh, I gave it one shot, and now here I am. So in, I go back to that email over and over again where master told me that, you know, stay with your parents and serve them. And he did not let me go. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I laughed to myself because I, I, I think I read this somewhere that um, in one of the books or somewhere I read this that um, you make plans and then Babuji laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I keep thinking of that because... Um, I made a plan. I, I thought that was the part that was cut, like, you know, cut out for me. But Master had different plans. And now here I am. And I, he gave me so much more than I could ever have imagined. So in the end, it, it's just that no matter what you decide on, because you think you want that, your heart will always guide you. And my heart did tell me that maybe, you know, maybe it's better. It, maybe that w isn't the part that I want mm -hmm. to go ahead with. But it's something that I want to do because out of, because that is the only thing I've ever known. Sure. So going back to your old patterns is much more easier than, you know, anticipating what's going to happen. Maybe it might turn out to be the greatest thing in your life. But it also comes with a lot of fear. It comes with a lot of uh, unknowingness. So would you be willing to tread on that path where you never know what's going to happen next? And Master did that for me. Master, Master knew that. I had to be here. I had to do something. I don't. I still don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I know that if I'm willing to listen to that voice, if I'm willing to actually let my fears take a back seat, then I will find my way. So I, I, I think that from that moment on, was I was like, Master has his own way, and he's always going to have his own way. Yeah. So I, I know that whatever he sets out for me is for the greater good. Yeah, that's incredible faith. <laughs> and in in many when in in very many ways you're also surrendering to that voice right because mm -hmm. i think i heard you say how you know you had that rebel <laughs> yeah. sort of mindset the first thing that popped up in your head when you read that email was great you've written that yeah. i respect you <laughs> but i want to do this <laughs> and i'm going to go ahead and do that yeah. um, and you know and yet sort of everything around you fell into place in the way it that it allowed you to follow your dreams and open a door which you had not even imagined would exactly. open for you because you just accepted the fact that, okay, I'll make my plans, but mm -hmm. I'm still open to exploring something else, which is, you know, that call from Mira Nair or going there and actually showing up. Um, but I think what I really wanted to ask you more about there was, have there been moments where you have just meditated on set? Because I tend to do that a lot at work. When I feel overwhelmed, I sort of find a quiet corner to just connect uh, with myself and come back. So I'm sure, you know, in that noisy space, are you still able to find that quiet moment and meditate? And have you done that? And just tell me about that. Yeah, way too many times. I think every set I go to, actually, I've done that. Because, uh, yeah, because sometimes it gets too loud outside. And, you know, you're... You're still trying to figure out so many things internally. 
and meditation has always been that thing that helps me figure out what is it that you know is not sitting right with me or what is it that's not aligning with me so i have done that way too many times on every set that i go to you know like you just have to ask ki i need 5 minutes i need 10 minutes and while things are being set up agara you just find a secluded spot so i sometimes get a van so i go back to the van and i tell everybody that you know for these 10 15 minutes please uh, do not disturb me because i just need some time for myself and i'll sit in the van and meditate and you know um whatever it is that is not sitting right then it i know what it is and and when i go back on set i have a different energy and people around me have seen that that you know before before but my that session of meditation it feels like i've i've been i'm overthinking too much i'm getting worked up because i'm not able to crack that emotion or that scene and after just you know those 10 15 minutes or sometimes sometimes you don't have the leisure of time where you can you know sit down for half an hour an hour or whatever but um that those few minutes also that you take out for yourself uh those are enough because you know that you you have again grounded yourself you know whatever it was that was working you up too much was external and you push it back that way and now you found your way again and uh i go back on set and i do it again and if it happens great if it might not happen in the first take but um at least i know now that i can i can lower that voice now i i i am in charge and i'll take take charge appa always actually tells me this that you know whenever you are uh, whatever work you're starting or whatever you're doing take master's name and he'll guide you and in when i'm meditating um after the end of my meditation i also say a prayer out to him ki in my heart that you know i am uh, whatever it is you are doing okay i don't know so now you take charge and you you guide me and it happens and uh, it really does help so yeah i've done that so are you also saying that the meditation you know what they call like you know the flow state it sort of helps you achieve that where you're almost feeling like one with your craft or yeah yeah because um tanya might not be having the best day but the character is you know in the happiest in the most choppy mood so now i have to bring honesty into that into that character's day into that character's emotions and it doesn't come from the inside but when i remove the i from that thing when i can remove that i know that in that moment what i, I am whoever they want me to be i am whatever they want me to be so yeah then i'm one with the craft and then the craft speaks then tanya has removed from that situation yeah well you almost talk as if that's what we need to do in life <laughs> like remove the pragya and just let the soul be and then everything will be perfect because we'll be back with where the source is what our higher purpose is yeah. but i think what i really wanted to ask you more about there was you know rejection is very difficult um, right and i guess when you're younger it's a little bit easier to deal with mm-hmm. uh, not because it's easier emotionally but you feel in your heart that my life is just starting out it's okay i have a long way to go i'll keep building and i'll find something that i really like but now i'm sure even at this stage in your career i'm sure there are moments when you really want to do something or you know it could it doesn't have to be in your professional career but it could be in so many other uh, spheres of life where uh, you know when you get that similar feeling of rejection how do you deal with it differently because of number 1 also the fact that you are successful so it gives you a lot of confidence but what else you know do you feel your inner journey has strengthened you so i'm just curious about that i think the biggest learning for me was from this incident itself that some things you might want will not turn out the way you want them to and some things that you think you could never want will happen for you so you really have to be open to that uh and exposing myself and putting myself in the position where i was willing to get rejected again willing to go over that whole thing again really did help me that uh because it was really something that i really like you know i gave my heart to this i i love the work that i do mm-hmm. and uh, for this i am willing to go over it over and over again because uh it just is something like it is special yeah. so uh, when you really truly love something or somebody you do not think of the consequences you do not think of what you're going to get back because you just 
love and love never asks for anything in return so um i learned that um earlier on in it, actually i was really terribly afraid of rejection mm-hmm. uh, because it made me doubt myself so much that you know maybe i'm not good enough and maybe um, maybe this isn't what i'm meant to do uh, and all these insecurities that you're going through it just strengthens those things and and those voices that that noise became extremely loud to the point that i wasn't sure what i was meant to do i i i did not think i was good enough for acting i did not think i was good enough for writing i didn't i just had absolutely no clue so i really thought that i there was nothing i could ever do i would just be very average and there's nothing wrong with being average but i had expectations of myself and i and i saw around me uh, my friends doing so well and my siblings doing so well and i just wanted to share in that happiness with them with, of some with something of my own mm-hmm. i wanted them to you know say that uh, i wanted to feel proud of myself i wanted to feel that i did it sure and um the phase that i was going through it just really uh, it broke my heart uh it was it was tough i i don't like talk i um, no i can imagine of course yeah, yeah, because the yeah. passion that you have for your work you can see on the screen so yeah. everyone feels that you really love what you do i hope so yeah <laughs> uh, but um when i got a suitable boy i still went in with zero expectations um i i really had put myself down so much that i did not think i could get this and i was reading up uh, in the newspaper about all these other you know bigger a listed a listed actors and actresses who were you know being contemplated for the role and i really had no chance there so i just um i prepared myself for rejection again um and i think when you prepare yourself for for something that you do not want to um it takes a toll on you um i started dealing with a lot of other insecurities that i had i started depending um i started becoming becoming very close off i would not talk to anybody i wouldn't uh, because i did not have anything to add to those conversations i did not think i fit in anywhere so um finding that place where i belonged became very difficult for me um but now after these experiences after i and at that time also my only constant was master yeah i was only talking to him um in my prayers in my head um he was my he he really is my friend he's my mentor he's my guide so i don't i can't assign one position to him he's so many roles and um uh, I I still whenever I talk to him I tell him that I'm sorry I'm bothering you with all these things but you're the only one I've ever known my entire life. So um I always had him and I knew that uh, I just had this faith that with him and obviously my family always affirmed this that um they could see what I was going through and uh they just knew they would just tell me that I know they know I I like my mom would tell me and my papa would tell me that we know you feel lost at this time but um you'll figure it out and if you have faith in master if you believe in chari ji if you believe in daji he will do the work for you you just need to let him navigate because right now you're in very insistent on taking charge and taking the wheels in your hand but why don't you surrender and um my i was like you don't know what i'm going through yeah i i don't think you uh, you can you know what is going on inside of me because you are all you know where you belong and um they they let me wallow and um uh, that was very important for me because uh i understood that even though they they did not necessarily know what i was going through or did not understand what i was going through they were still going through with it with me and um i i felt it and i understood it much later so coming from that to here now where i am where i'm i'm okay to let things go because i know something else is meant for me so maybe the things that i want may not necessarily work out always and uh, but i know that whatever is meant for me will find me and i i i think my family master meditation and th- that is why i found my way back to meditation that you know you can't always grapple with things you sometimes have to let go and uh I think this is what master or, or one of the preceptors I was meditating with he told me that when you hold on to something too tightly it slips through your fingers yeah. so sometimes you just have to just loosen your grip a little bit and it'll stay 
so I am working on that right now, how to loosen my grip a little bit and just understanding that um, rejection will happen for sure. Yeah. No, so I think what really appealed to me, lots of things appealed to me. Uh, out of all all that you shared and you were so vulnerable and I know what you said really hit me in my heart and resonated a lot because I've had those moments as well when you're deep down and you feel like the whole world is against you <laughs> and no matter what you do and no matter how hard you try, it keeps going down a rabbit hole and becoming worse and worse. And so, again, like your parents, I don't understand you. Uh, <laughs> and I think understanding is highly overrated. Yeah. Uh, it's not important to necessarily understand my best friend or my sister or my cousin or my father or my mother. But if I can just stand behind them and stand beside them and say, look, like your parents did, um, I know what you're going through. And no matter what, I'm here for you unconditionally, I think just changes how you show up as well. Because at some point of this wallowing, like you said, one month, two months, three months, at some point you would have been like, okay, I really now get up, need to get up, get up, get up and get on my feet, if for no one else but my parents yeah, and for my right. siblings, yeah. you know, and really sort of put myself out there and say yes. Um, so I, I kind of understand what you're going through and I, I mean, or rather what you went through and I see that you're still on that journey. Um, and so whatever people might see this sort of external side of you, which is, you know, you're, you're giggly, you're, you're very happy, you're smiling. But I know that there is always this deep sense of uh, introspection and that you take life very seriously and that you think through things and you're very thoughtful about what you do. Um, and some of it could be because of meditation, but I think it's also to do with who you truly are. So tell me a little bit more about, aren't there days when, like I was telling you earlier, when, you know, you don't want to be that smiley person and you don't want to be this giggly person and you need to show up and you need to shoot and or you need to do an interview or you need to do a promotion. How do you really go down and find that strength? So it is, if you, so from my, uh, I've, I've learned this one thing and that comes from my appa. And he's always taught me that when somebody is willing to love you, you really need to be open to that. You, it doesn't matter what you're going through. And it doesn't matter if you're not willing to be loved. That person is willing to love you and you need to show up for them. Because um, it isn't about you anymore. You need to know that life goes on and with or without you, things will go on. So you need to show up for the other person. Uh, you might be having a terrible day. You might not want to smile. And it's okay, it's okay, take your time, but know that life is much bigger than you and it will not wait. So uh, be lucky, be grateful that there are people out there who are willing to love you at your best, at your worst, and who are willing to take all these tantrums of yours that you throw at us. <laughs> so so and that really taught me and uh, I see him and uh, I mean of all these people around me that they will never let you see what's going on inside them because it is about you in that moment. It isn't about them. And they're so grateful that you are, somebody's out there who's willing to, you know, shower all their love onto you. So why don't you just take it? Uh, even if you don't want to, just take it because you will find it somewhere in you that, mm -hmm. you know, that place where it belongs. So um, there are days when I am, I am in my moods <laughs> and uh, I don't want to do anything at all. Um, but it is a like my... Family is always there to remind me that um, be grateful, count your blessings, because a lot of people would swap with would swap places with you in a heartbeat, and you do not know how incredibly lucky you are that you are in a position where there are so many people out there who are who are loving you for just being you. You we not a lot of people get that chance, and people who work I don't know five times as hard they still don't get to be in this position. So it's not like you're not working hard. You are working hard and you are allowed moments where, you know, you don't want to be around anybody and you are allowed those moments. But when there is somebody at your doorstep, when there is somebody who wants to talk to you and who just wants, who just, who's just happy talking to you, you take that because 
it isn't about you so i've learned that things really aren't about me it's about showing up for the other person you know i always compliment you for your bravery because i think you know putting yourself out there takes a lot it's very easy to play characters um <laughs> which you do an amazing job of by the way uh, <laughs> but to really be to you kind yeah pragya i love you so much i can't not give you love <laughs> yeah thank you uh, but you know just it's easy to play characters but to truly know who you are and be yourself and i think you know i'm on that journey and i think meditation helps me um, unravel who i am um, every sort of moment and every day when i contribute but what i liked about what you said is a lot around gratitude and i think we don't spend enough time counting our blessings um i think covid was a big reminder where you know you suddenly looked around you and people were losing loved ones and there was so much tragedy and so much heartbreak and it really reminded me to value everything that i had yeah. and every day thank uh you know god or daji whoever but just be in absolute sort of deep sense of humility and gratitude that thank you for what i have and what i have is enough i don't want that bmw i don't want that fancy car i am just happy where i am with what i have and you know i heard you say that you know that you were just you're just happy because you know that no matter what whatever's meant for you will find you and i think in this cluttered world right and you know we see a lot of social media we see instagram facebook and um i talk to a lot of young people or other gen z since i'm so <laughs> old but gen z when i go back to jaipur which is where i'm from you know they they want all these things that they see you know they want the fancy car they want the good life uh but they don't for a minute pause to be thankful for what they have truly and some of them i understand have ambitions and those are right ambitions and they and you must work hard gratitude doesn't mean that uh, you get lazy right. and you be like i'm happy where i am um you of course have to work uh, for your material ambitions but not let them get so far ahead of you that you kind of get completely lost of who i am you know where i'm coming from and so i really want to ask you what do you think at this point in your life is sort of your higher purpose like i'm sure we you think about that right why am i here what am i doing why acting and why not this what is my higher purpose i think about that question way too much i think <laughs> and uh i remember when i was working with master ones and the, the things that you said about you know it's not bad to want materialistic things but at what where do you draw the line where you beyond that you're consumed by those things and uh I do want things. I I want to do things with my life and uh there are things that I want as well. So and there is this one line in our prayer which I whenever I'm saying my prayer I always you know focus on this line and I asked master also this uh the line is that hamari ichcha hai hamari unnati mein badak hai. And I asked master that what 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 does this line mean? And he said that your desires are okay. You wanting things is okay but um uh, you should know where that want is coming from and when you really truly know that you know the intention behind that want behind that desire and you know how to navigate uh, that desire like you know your direction with it then you're on the right track but when that desire becomes bigger than you mm -hmm. bigger than um, the goals that you had set for your life bigger than the people around you then you've lost yourself so he said that and he's he stated a very simple example that you know for a student uh, wanting better grades it's not something that is hindering his growth right it's something that he wants to do but it's it ichcha hi hai wo bhi but uh, it's for a greater good so that i think i'm still finding but i think i really when i think of my higher purpose i really come to this conclusion that i'm here to love <laughs> beautiful <laughs> beautiful and uh I don't know what that means but I just keep coming back to this conclusion that I'm here to love and um I love people I love things and um I really just love I don't yeah. know I don't know what people are going to draw from it but um this emotion this feeling that you have um it goes 
so much beyond what we've interpreted love as. Um, I love my sister way too much. I love her in the way that it eats me up. Uh, <laughs> and um, when she was leaving, I, I knew I loved her more than I could ever love anything. And uh, it was that love that made me want to, you know, want something that's much bigger than me. I, I want the best for her. And if that means setting her free and letting her figure her own life out, I think that is the way I can love people. So making somebody, like assuring somebody that you'll be there with them no matter what, without wanting to possess them, without wanting to, you know, control them, that is the kind of love that I feel I'm here for. That I can, um, I want to redefine this possession thing that we've, uh, you know, sort of internalized so much that it's just an emotion and I really, I don't know, I, I can, when I'm with somebody, all I want them to feel is love. That is, that is my, that is wow. my purpose here. Yeah. No, so, I mean, you've said so many profound things here where, <laughs> no, seriously, because I think we always think of love as something, even though we say I unconditionally love you, I think there's always something in the back of our minds, call it ego, call it survival instinct, call it whatever, but there's always a vested agenda in most situations, right? Yeah. And I think that is why most times when I read about love, everyone says that it's like a state. You know, it's love is not something you give or you take, like you very rightly pointed out, but it's just a state that you're in. And so what I'm hearing you say is that's what you feel your purpose mm -hmm. is, which is to be in that state constantly so that if anyone comes in contact with you or, you know, in your is in your vicinity, feels that unconditional state and is inspired by it and wants to sort of, not just inspired, but I think there are moments where we don't realize, like you were saying, there are people in the room who are so conflicted, sad, um, you know, feeling so low about everything around themselves. And all that they want is that one spark. And maybe that one conversation with you, feeling that they can be liberated because there is someone who they can fall back on. Even for that moment. doesn't have to be for a lifetime. Yeah. When my sister moved to Australia, I was willing to move with her, like move to her because that is the only home I've ever known. That is, uh, that is, she is my home. And uh, my, my, my brothers, when they moved, I, I, I felt like there was this hollowness inside me that it, and even though it feels like I, I don't know. It felt like it would consume me. It, fe it felt like I, there, I, oh, it was dark. It was, uh, it, I felt like I did not know what to do anymore. Um, and and I, I sort of came to terms with this fact much later that we can all love each other in our own you know, you know, ways and we will always love each other, but you can't always revolve your life around them. And... Mm -hmm. uh, I think for people who haven't had that feeling with their family where uh, love has been missing or there has been some sort of absence or there's this void that they feel, uh, I really do think that maybe meditation can help them. That, uh, you know, finding something that really does ground you when, like I was talking about this earlier on, when the, void, when the chaos outside gets too much, you just have to come back to yourself. And now that my siblings aren't here anymore and... There are moments in, at my house where I feel like nobody understands me. Yeah. And um, because role reversal is happening, so... Reverse things, parenting is happening. <laughs> reverse parenting is happening. I, I, I don't have those people around me who I would fall back on anymore. Like, at least we're in different time zones, so um, it's all, it isn't always like smooth sailing. But really, meditation has helped. I, I think meditation can help because a lot of my friends, who I'm, I was mentioning that... Uh, who, for whom the, for whom family or for whom their home isn't a home. Yeah. Uh, I've seen them go like with meditation. I've seen some of them go with like I've introduced a lot of them to heartfulness. Mm -hmm. I've also seen people go to um, other forms of meditation, and it really does. I I think when you find uh, who you are, uh, I I think it's a lifelong journey of finding who you are. But at least you see a glimpse of who you can be. I think that really helps. So you might not always be in the smoothest of environments where uh, you can call it a, your happy place. But when you know within you you're safe and within you you're grounded, 
I think you'll find your way. So meditation, I think, can really help with that. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Uh, but you know, also those sorts of people with that lack also take that into their next set of relationships. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, when you function in a function from a place of a void or a lack in an intimate relationship, like with your partner or in a marriage. it really impacts everything because now you're giving or holding the other person responsible for your happiness yeah right and that's that's a lot of pressure walking into that relationship um and i know you know you're still young uh, uh, but i know you've had a few heartbreaks so <laughs> give me some advice uh, on how to deal with a heartbreak yeah. cuz i'm also going through my own sense of a heartbreak but i'd love to know and i'm sure many people would love to know that a beautiful successful girl like you can also go through heartbreak <laughs> and how do you cope with that um oh yo okay um <laughs> it is hard it is um when i see that i love uh without wanting anything in return um it didn't come to me very easily uh i still love the way i would lo- like i used to uh, but it fa- it took me a lot of time to love this way again uh because um uh, relationships I- with your partner you you tend to get lost sometimes and i i did that uh you you have your partner you have your safe space i do not have my siblings and uh, i told when i was going through my whatever things uh <laughs> I told him this that he, I met him at a time where um, my siblings were moving away my sis, my my closest friends were moving away and there was this void inside of me and all this love that I had for them I thought I pinned this love on to him mm-hmm. and I and I felt like that wasn't fair to him and that wasn't fair to all my other relationships that I had like you know with my sister because this one person consumed my entire life and it it became about my work and then him and i did not have time for anything else and um uh, that wasn't fair to my sister that wasn't fair to my friends that wasn't fair to my brothers that wasn't fair to my family but uh i fell into this pattern and uh the moment i realized that this was happening you know i consciously took a step back that no no i this this partnership wasn't about you know uh It was about two people being their own individual selves yet there is a codependency that you form and that is okay but where do you draw the line between being codependent and being lost so um, from codependency when it became uh, when i realized that i couldn't i couldn't function without him ki i felt like ki main bikhar jaungi so um, i knew i had to take a step back and i had to take charge of things again where, where he had his own life and he had his own aspirations um that i wasn't a part of which was completely fair because that was uh, the deal but in everything that i did i wanted him to be included which i felt like was my way of showing love and we speak different love languages so that is fine we sp- like i am not necessary i love the way i would want to be loved so um there there are times where you you sort of you know you we are you on the same page but you're on different lines so uh yeah very well put <laughs> so uh, for us to find that same line at the same time wasn't um, the easiest but we did sort of when you're speaking when you're with somebody for so long um you start understanding their language you might not not always you know be able to decipher it but there are moments when you crack it uh but when i was going through my heartbreak he was also my closest friend so i feel like i uh, i did not just lose my partner i lost my closest friend because uh everything that all these things that i was doing i wanted to sh- you know share those things with him but uh i knew that he would always be present in my life uh and uh they these people whom i have had a romantic connection with or whatever it wasn't i had to see them as something beyond romantic romantic connections i i had to see them as learnings i mm-hmm. had to i had to see them as a uh, people who came in my life to teach me certain things and uh, with all with my relationships i learned that uh, they're not going to be there in your life forever and sometimes forever means you know just that little brief moment that you shared with them and that can seem like an eternity and but you take that you take that and you keep it with you and you preserve it and um, this love that you felt for them was real so you 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 keep that love alive in you because 
when you're going through something like uh, a heart a breakup or whatever it is hard because uh, it feels like this is it i imagine my entire li- like you you start imagining things and it feels like the end of the world because it feels like you you wouldn't be able to you know function without this person yeah feels it, like the udai chopra moment in you know in those zoom yeah, where you see like yeah, every, like you, bachche <laughs> shaadi everything <laughs> everything comes crashing down right but uh, you are your own individual self and the love that you were giving to this other person you've always had that within you so know that you'll find your way back to that love and uh, i will always love these people who who i who taught me so much they were very special and uh, this last break of, of mine was very difficult for me i am being so oh my god yeah. itna zyada raw but uh, i i don't know it time heals things and it is true and uh, when i felt like there were days i couldn't stop crying i was just in my bed and i did not want to get up i did not my my habit was broken and uh, mm. my but my heart only knew that habit so it would keep going back to that old habit not knowing that the address had changed okay it's it's not my habit doesn't reside there anymore so you have to take all this love that you have and start giving it to yourself because you at at some point you feel like you don't deserve the love that uh, you don't deserve love you don't deserve being loved and it feels like you just want to cut off from the entire world and you want to you know uh, it feels like you're alone again it feels like you'll never have that again but i hope it happens i really it do will. Hope. <laughs> but um, right now I'm, i am i my last relationship really this did teach me this that all this love that you've had that you were giving to this other person you've always had it within you so just why don't you give it to yourself and you know make it about your own self it isn't about the other person always most of the times yes you have to show up for the other person but this love wasn't generated by them this love was always within you so it will find a place again and you will maybe find another person again and just because you can't call them yours anymore doesn't mean that you know that love wasn't real or it was that was it you take whatever you've learned from them and you 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 there are so many happy moments that you've shared right so you keep the happy memories and you take it as a learning and um, you keep that love within you alive and you give it to whoever needs it next so yeah. uh, and i don't mean it in a romantic way you know just like you just hop on to another relationship but love in the way that you don't want anything in return love in the way that you just want to be there like yeah. like that very wise words uh nay nay uh, i think the few things that i that i felt that i got from you was you know how you were able to look at a very heartbreaking situation in your life and really process it for yourself and do two very important things one is uh process it positively <laughs> yeah. take the time to process it feel what you're feeling because you know someone like me will very w- quickly want to fill that space and make myself so busy with yeah. work and other other things because it's very difficult for me to process those emotions because they're tough you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say these are some of the things that i could do better because look you can't control what the other person did or did not do but what you can is what i can do and how i can work on myself mm-hmm. which you very rightly pointed out and then the second is i think just this belief system that we grew up with where you know there's a certain kind of what what i mean by belief system is the the stories we tell ourselves when we have bad uh, or difficult moments in our life you know like something happened to you when you were 6 years old and what you decide decided from it was that i'm not lovable yeah right and we do that all the time and then suddenly boom like you're 26 years old or 27 years old and Uh, you know for me i'm not going to tell my age i'm too old <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but you need to then reprocess and rewire that voice in your head and let it say what you were saying which is yeah i have all this love and how about just give it to myself how about not be so hard um and instead of dieting go have that ice cream which i really mm-hmm. love and that puts the smile on my face because we just so wired to be hard on ourselves because we feel that's what's going to make us successful mm-hmm. but that's not what you need when you are at at your stage or at my stage in life uh, what we need is a lot of kindness and a lot of love that we need to give ourselves mm-hmm. and i know that um you know 
like I come from Jaipur, as you know, but in tier two, tier three cities, generally women are wired to be, you know, to sacrifice a lot, to also be, not show themselves up to be the way they are because they feel like they are going to be stereotyped. अरे वो तो ज़्यादा बोलती है तो इसकी तो शादी नहीं होएगी क्योंकि इसके ज़्यादा ओपिनियंस होंगे तो कहाँ से शादी कौन लड़का इसके साथ शादी करेगा या इसको ज़्यादा पढ़ाओ मत या लेट हर नॉट गो प्ले आउट गो आउट एंड प्ले स्पोर्ट और लेट हर नॉट बी और जस्ट फॉलो द पैशन दैट शी वॉन्ट्स बिकॉज दैट्स हु शी ट्रूली इज मे बी शी माई चेंज अर माइंड फाइव ईयर्स लेटर और मे बी टू ईयर्स लेटर मे बी सिक्स मंथ्स लेटर बट हाउ केन दोज गर्ल्स इन दोज टीयर टू टीयर थ्री सिटीज सोट ऑफ you know look at you and feel like you know yeah if i want to act or yeah if i want to do theater i want to follow my path and i want to stand up and say it's okay and this is what i want to do and just let me do it and we'll take it as it comes i i think that exactly like finding a passion what I, by passion i don't necessarily mean that you know I I see people being passionate about things and then their passions change and that is perfectly fine. I feel like you can't hold them, you know, to a certain you, you can't expect that okay, I was once I loved I wanted to be a doctor once and uh, I loved kids, okay? So I was like, "Yo, I want to be I want to be a pediatrician." Doesn't mean that I my passions can't change. Doesn't mean that I can can't have more than one passion. And exactly like you were saying that it might change it might change you know 6 months later it might change 5 years later whatever but allow yourself that room that you know if it changes so will it be it is fine but uh, i need right now in this moment i feel like i need to follow this so you really have to fight for what you want and uh, it's not easy but uh, when you feel like it's worth it you will i i know you i know i women especially are so passionate about like you know whenever they are committed to something they they walk the extra mile and they make things happen so uh, i i think that when you want something you really have to believe that you can make it happen and it will happen and uh, these external voices are going to tell you all sorts of things uh, that you know this can't happen i i i have grown up in delhi and they get uh, acting wasn't something that was necessarily you know seen up seen as something that was acceptable uh coming from the family that I was coming from uh, or uh, in the society that I live in because you hear all these sorts of things you know that you know ye hota hai industry mein wo hota hai and yes there might be uh, a lot of truth to those things but uh, you have to see it for yourself right and uh, i i i was lucky enough that my my family supported me like my si- my sister really fought for me in those at those times that you know when she saw that i had a knack for something i didn't believe in myself but she did but now i I've, i've understood that if you are not willing to fight your battles for the things that you want on your own there would be nobody else if you don't speak up your own for your own things there might not necessarily be a sana didi for you and i'm sorry i hope there is but you need to find your own calling and uh, it will come to you you can do all these workshops there 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 are so many workshops happening nowadays right in yeah. everywhere all around the world all I, and india especially, especially I, i see this boom of uh, co curricular activities that is coming up yeah. which is a great thing because now i finally see that shift acad- like happening from academics to co curricular things that you know not every child is cut out to be a doctor or an engineer there are other things and there's so much more you can do with your life like i have a friend uh, who did engineering and now he's a chef wow. and his his doctor his parents are doctors and everybody in his family has been a doctor so for him making that shift was very difficult because he also had to come to terms with it that this thing that i've grown up with this this knowingness that i've grown up with is not what i want i want to explore the unknown and that i am willing to fight for it it might not necessarily you know be something that they will be willing to accept that easily but if i believe in it i can i will make them see it so i i think for all these women in tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh, it will be a hard fight but if you're willing to you know fight that fight i know you it will be worth it and if you believe in yourself the universe will make it happen um so in those moments when you feel like it's it gets too hard i just i again i i keep talking about meditation because a master 
is what I've known my entire life. When I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody else, I still would talk to him. In my prayers, I would talk to him. In my journaling, I would talk to him. So um, I, I think those things can really help where you, where you write things down, where, you know, whatever you're feeling in that moment, uh, and you sit with those feelings. I, I think we also tend to do this, that when things get tough, when something gets uncomfortable, we tend to run away from it. We tend to, you know, not want to accept it. We live in denial so much that we don't want to accept that we, this is not, this, this doesn't feel right. You know, like, I feel sad, and we always, we always told that, you know, you need to be happy, and you need to, you know, there's nothing to be sad about. And that's okay, I understand that. But some days aren't, some days are meant to wallow. And you do that, you sit with those feelings, and those feelings really, instead of overwhelming you, you'll understand them. And when you understand those feelings, I think you find your, you find your path. I think you find your way then. And in those moments, you'll crack it. Yeah. But the one thing for sure is, like, don't think you're alone. Yeah, never. You know, I think those are the moments just make you feel like you're sinking. And I think those are uh, outcomes that um, nobody wants for young people. Yeah. Feeling that helplessness. And, yeah. and I think you're right where journaling is really important. Reaching out uh, to people you trust, uh, very, very important. You know, go talk to them. And I'm sure some solution or something will emerge. And most of those solutions, like you said, are within you. I think you just have to take the time to find that voice. And meditation can truly do that. It's done that for me. It's done that for you. Uh, you know, heartfulness has been core to me. Uh, but lots of very intense conversation. Now I want to ask you a fun question. Have you seen any of your shows with your parents? I want to know about that. Because <laughs> I remember you were right here and we were watching one of our common friends, you know, he lives under a rock. He had, <laughs> he had not watched The Suitable Boy. And I was like, Pagal ho gaya hai ka. you need to see it now. And I turned uh, Netflix on and Tanya was sitting right beside me. And so... That was the most embarrassing thing yeah. <laughs> That I cannot do that. It, because I, th you guys see me as I am. And on screen, I I mean, I am the character I'm playing. So for my family, for my friends, it's very difficult for them to, you know, see me as that character. <laughs> and they're like... You, so for, for people whom I am really close to, it's very difficult for me to you know, sit with them and watch anything at all that has me in it. I can watch anything else in the world but my show. <laughs> yes. My family. You were super embarrassed. So you're telling me your parents have not seen or your, your, chachu, your chachu, your chachi. Of course, your cousins would have seen all your shows, but like... They've seen it independently. None of them have seen anything with you. And have they all watched it at least on their own? They have. They. I make sure that they do. Okay. Because I want, I want the to The Tanu ji in you wakes <laughs> up. <laughs> no, because I want to know what I can do better, right? Like, and I don't, I mean, these people are the ones who will look out for me. And uh, there will be a lot of people who would, you know, just appreciate everything that you do. And, and that's great. But... Somebody who can honestly tell you where you went wrong or where you can work on and, you know, like what needs to be worked on or uh, the, the way, the path that you can do, or, you know, what is, what, is, what is better for you. I think I need those people around me. And I think my siblings and my family have always been those for me that whose, whose opinions have really, truly mattered to me. And um, so they, I, I so... Uh, Tooth Fari was one show that I had my because it was being screened in Bombay and my siblings were here for the first time. I did contemplate whether or not I should share that, you know, that screening with them. <laughs> but um, I had to. It was for me in that moment, it wasn't about me, it was about them. That, you know, they would get to see something like this because they've always asked me questions. Ki kaisa hota hai, wo kya hota hai, sab kuch. And uh, I, they were here, so I had to make the most of that opportunity. Yeah. So that was the only time that uh, my siblings watched two episodes with me, but I made sure that I would not sit in the same row as them. <laughs> so I, I let them sit again, and I sat in the immediate, like, the last row. But n I have never watched any anything with my family that has me in it. I cannot. It's <laughs> I, I feel like I'm uh, a hypocrite that who's doing that thing on screen because... Um, they love you so much, right? That they um, they're not willing to see the see anything else but you. 
so when 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 my uh, my mom watches anything and uh, she was watching claims i think the second season and it had a scene where i was breaking down and she she couldn't watch it yeah because she's like you know that's my tanu crying and uh, and it's like mom but you need to see that character it's it's okay it's your daughter i understand <laughs> but uh, in that moment i'm somebody else so they don't i know it's difficult for them to see me beyond uh their daughter yeah, or yeah, their exactly, sister exactly exactly like i get so many people uh, relatives and all that they, they tell me that i, I couldn't watch your scene and i'm like kya ho kyun itna bura tha kya <laughs> and they're like nahi because we couldn't we, it is difficult for us to see you as anything beyond what you mean to us and uh, i i see that and i understand that but i have told them that because you are the ones who really truly matter to me your opinions really truly matter to me so i need you to see those things and i need you to tell me what needs to be worked on what you liked what you didn't like so that i know what to do next and i i am this i do it for myself yes but i do it also for you because i anywhere i go any character i play i take you with me you guys are always with me so uh, that that is the thing that i want you to see that could i bring that honesty there sure yeah. sure <laughs> no that's very interesting I also want to ask you you know from each of these characters that you're playing I'm sure you must be sort of borrowing something for your life uh, right and I think you know being sort of the adult uh, you know the elder rather uh, you know I feel like you know what did you take away from uh, Lata's character in choosing the right life partner because I think that's what you should be doing now but <laughs> 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 but yeah <laughs> from lata i i remember when i read the book the first time i was really rooting for kabir the, mm-hmm. the first love um because the romantic in you <laughs> exactly it was like ki but yaar nahi yaar hona chahiye the bollywood in me was screaming ki nahi love wins it all but um the choice that lata made i i also understood. so there was this one article that my uh, closest very close friend had shared with me before i was even cast for lata before we even knew that you know there was a, a series being made on a suitable boy and um, in that article uh, lata lata writes letters to her mother and her sister and she describes her relationship with each one of them each with each one of the suitors kabir uh, amit and harish and uh, of course uh, kabir is the love of her life and it's the first love so there's that butterfly feeling there is that tingling feeling in your heart and in your stomach that you know everything seems better everything uh, seems rosier when you're with that person and with amit she shared that intellectual relationship uh, where they understood each other's worlds and uh, because lata loved books and uh, i i they understood each other's passions and they understood where they were coming from but with harish there was nothing special there was nothing uh, romantic so to say but um, there was a quiet understanding and i think that quiet understanding is so underrated uh, we don't value that uh, that calmness that the other person can give you um, butterflies will go away um, passions will change but that quiet understanding remains and uh, i understood that uh, from from lata i understood that your world can go in a whirlwind with people and it's a great feeling to experience but that whirlwind will not last that that storm is going to sweep you away at one time and where and yeah. you are not you don't want to be uprooted you want somebody who will stand with you in that storm and you know who will bear it with you so no matter what um that that tingling feeling feels so you know that it feels great it gives you that rush but uh find somebody who calms that and uh, i i really did learn that from lata that you know i in all those interviews also i was doing i whenever somebody would say that you know i was rooting for this one i was rooting for that one i don't understand why lata made that choice as like <laughs> it took me a long time to understand that but when i read i mean i kept going back to that uh, that article where she was with, with those letters mm-hmm. and how she described each relationship that um, she wasn't a muse she wasn't uh, just a love interest she was a person an individual and so- she needed somebody who would see her as that maybe they did not come from the same uh, background they did not have the same upbringing but 
having somebody who is still willing to understand that that is so important and yeah. so underrated so with harish she had she made that choice that they might uh, not always be on the same page but one of them will match the other person's pace with reading and they will come to the same page ultimately so that i think that calm that composure will last so that i is what i took away from lata that amazing your brain and your heart are going to be conflicted at times but you will and you find yourself being with the per- with whomever you find that whoever can ground you i think that is that is going to be your person yeah absolutely i mean I, i see so many long relationships you know like you see 30 years 40 years 50 years of marriage and you're so right about what you said because you know in a crowded dinner room and you will just see that couple sort of looking at each other and making eye contact and guess what they have already communicated yeah exactly and earlier in our relationships we spend like Two hours, like मुझे समझ नहीं आ रही मैं क्या बोल रही हूँ which part of this can't you get like come on you know so I I kind of understand what you mean in terms of going through that process but also having glimpses of that because fifty years is not when you want to choose a partner right like you have to sort of figure that out early on but making that choice on who is giving you that deep rooted stability yeah vis a vis that very short lived Uh, butterflies which uh, gives you the thrill yeah. and gives you that very like you said bollywood and hollywood kind of love yeah. where everything is blooming and everything is beautiful and yeah. lo- life just seems the best yeah. uh, but if that person if that's and you can get both in the same person as well you know exactly. you don't and that's exactly. ideal that's amazing yeah. like you've uh, struck gold but then like always prioritize the stability and the quiet understanding is is what i'm hearing you say yeah. Well, great relationship advice. I I wish I'd met you seven years ago, but uh, I was still. Thinking. I wish I had this. I have. I wish I had this uh, input uh, a few years ago as well. But Even yeah. for yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. Lata, yeah. Why did you come so late in my life? But yeah. <laughs> no, and you know, in the show, you're almost like bored. In the yeah. sense, when she makes this boring choice, yeah, like exactly. really, and then you're right because it takes a lot of thinking, a lot of. Um, you know i would say not introspection but sort of profoundness in the choice she makes and why she makes it uh, but you know also hearing it from you it sort of has a enlightening moment for me as well uh, but what i really want to know now is so what's next for you and i know that uh, you know you're meditating you know you're doing uh, lots of shows and you know life is good touch wood and it's only going to be better uh, but what is really next for you both career wise but just you like the real tanya for me um for the first time in my life i think i've stopped worrying about what's next uh because i was always in this rush ki before one project would end you know i would be like ki what is next what is next i need something next i need to be working on something because i felt like i did not want to miss out on anything and uh, you know i would just be like yeah give me that give me that i i'll we we'll, we'll make it work but we have to do it because i just it gave me validation and uh, it felt like i belonged there so i did not want to miss out on anything but uh, i've realized now that i am going to miss out on things and uh, in my rush to do so much i'm missing out on what i really want uh, and when my job something that i love so much it feels like a job i'm doing something wrong you know um, so really i after 2020 i was working through covid as well and i am so lucky because i was doing something that i really loved and through 2020 then 2021 then 2022 i was constantly working and i never felt like i needed to take a break but i did not understand it was really taking a toll on me all these characters some of them aren't the easiest to do and um, tell me about a few just i'm uh, curious so there is a show that's coming out uh, on P, uh, prime video P, pi i mean so this character really took a toll on me that mm-hmm. um, yes i was just minakshi on set but i felt like i was bringing her back with me and uh, my my partner at the time would tell me that don't bring back your work 
and I, I tried doing that, but uh, I couldn't help it. And uh, even though I felt like I wasn't, I really was, and it burnt me out. Uh, like she was going through stuff, and I started internalizing those things so much that I felt like I, I did not know who Tanya was anymore. The way I talked, the way I, um, the way I greeted people also changed, uh, and. Wow. Uh, yeah, it, it it wasn't wow. <laughs> no, I know. I, I, it, what I mean, wow, is it it happens. It's yeah, real. It 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 really is. Uh, because you don't re- you don't even realize what's happening to you because you're in you're in and out in the same character. You're doing the same thing. Like you're doing you're living her out her life, right? And um, you don't know when the lines blur, and uh, when Tanya got lost in those things. And I it was also very like physically and mentally uh, taxing project for me because I also got COVID during that time. So I was stuck in Calcutta for the longest time and I felt like I just, after that project was done, I felt like I could, I it took everything out of mm. me and uh, I want, I still, I did not understand that maybe this was a time where I needed a break, where Tanya needed time to relax and, you know, to come back to herself. I jumped onto the other thing and... Um, Getting out of Minakshi and getting into this thing became so difficult for me that I did not I did not enjoy it anymore, and I and when I stopped enjoying it is when I realized oh shit I have done something wrong, I I think I need to you know take a few steps back and just see it as an outsider now and I started like you know talking to my friends more about it, and my friends weren't willing to talk to me because they're like we don't we don't recognize you anymore you are uh, you are lost like you. When we are talking to you, you, it feels like you aren't there anymore. You're physically there, but you're mentally somewhere else. And uh, because I had all these things going on inside me. That's so, a bad place to be. Yeah, it wasn't the, ha- but I, they still supported me through and they got me out of it. So uh, she was, I, I, I loved that character. And um, I remember there was some patchwork left to be shot and we shot that patchwork and as soon as I got into that costume, I felt like I did not want to talk to anybody. Because I went back into that <laughs> feeling. And I, I started writing because uh, whenever I'm feeling things, uh, when I feel like I can't communicate uh, with anybody, I, I write those things down. So I wrote it Great down. Tip. Then. <laughs> yeah. So because you are, I mean, it does help me. If it helps somebody else, then yes, please do that. Um, so I, I wrote the, I wrote it down that coming back to her felt so heavy. Just wearing wearing her earring felt so heavy. And it felt like I did not have anything else to give to her anymore. I did take a lot from her because um, when, when life is, you know, beating you down and how you still get up and go to work every day and you, you try and make the most of life still and you are willing to see that silver lining still, I think that takes a lot from you. So... She is very special to me in that in that sense that she never she was she was going through so much, and um, I hope it translates on screen. But as Tanya, I lived those things. So for for for, for that period of time, I I did not know anything else. So after after getting beaten down myself, I real, realized that uh, maybe it's time to give time to yourself. And uh, you can't always worry about what's next because I was saying yes to everything and then something came up that I really wanted to do but I did not, I couldn't take up anything more on my plate. So I had to let go of that thing that I really wanted to do. So I was like, okay, maybe it wasn't meant for me but it was also my own doing that uh, I was in a rush to do everything that the thing that I really wanted to do escaped me and uh, I now I've realized that I can't think about what I want to do next like you know what is happening next Uh, it's okay if something comes up great but I will not live in lack Mm -hmm. I will not live in that in that mental state that I'm not doing anything and I so I took uh, last year I took most of it off like Mm -hmm. because I was just working on myself that uh, Sometimes the craft also tires of you. So uh, if I don't have anything to add to it, then what am I doing there? So working on my own self bring helps me bring something new to the craft. As I grow up, 
as I learn from life, as I learn from my experiences, I bring those experiences to my characters, right? And uh, if I am, if I'm working, if I'm working on my skills, then it helps me bring something to those characters. If I know how to skate, for example, um, I can, I can tell them that you know there's something we can add to our characters, or we can you know do those things. But if I never take the time out to learn those things because I'm so occupied worrying about what's next, I will never have anything else more to offer. So there is a point where you exhaust yourself. So before you reach that point, I would suggest that you know take some time off and uh, really do things that make you happy. And if that the things that made you happy isn't doing that anymore, then you need to you know sort of uh, rethink your priorities. So. Now I'm really not thinking about what's next career-wise. For Tanya, I'm learning how to skate. Oh, so, amazing! Yay. Amazing. <laughs> That's why this this example just came to me. Uh, I, I for me right now I'm really working on uh, the things that made me happy as a kid, and I want to go back to those things because uh, I stopped reading, yeah. and that just broke my heart. I was like I haven't read a book in a month or two. Oh no, I can't do that. So now I'm learning the ukulele. I am wow. learning how to skate, and I'm just taking it one day at a time. That is where I'm at. Well, that's a big deal, huh? Because <laughs> uh, we've almost come full circle in this conversation where we started off with you saying a lot of no's because you felt rejected, and then you showed up and said lots of yeses. Yeah, exactly. And it got you to where you are now. Yeah. And now you're like, yes, it's amazing to say lots of yeses, but if it's taking away too much from me. I need to just sort of recalibrate and come back to who I am. And uh, but yeah, I mean, I think we've had an amazing conversation. Yeah. And uh, I always enjoy talking to you, and that's because, of course, because I love you and I love spending time with you <laughs> uh, and learning more about you. But also because I get a peep into a completely different world which I don't know anything about, <laughs> and so I learn a lot uh, from that. But also just. From the challenges that you know, sort of your generation is going through, because I think it's a, it's very different from at least what we went through. I mean, we had we had our own set of challenges, but it's good for me to see and learn how those are changing and how someone like you uh, at your age is so wise. And I wish I was that wise. Um, but what I'm also hearing you say a lot of is spend time with yourself, take the inner journey. Yeah. Meditation is one tool that you have used. But also spend a lot of time with your family. Have immense gratitude uh, for everything that you have, because that's what's going to help you unlock the love that's within you. And I will keep checking in on you on whether you're in that state of love or not. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I I don't even need like you know I don't articulate myself very well. I know that, but still you take away all these things and you know you put it in such a beautiful way and you and you make me sound so wise i'm like wow i never thought of those things that's the only skill i have yeah wo to bas de lo ab to pata hai podcast chal jayega ye articulation ki skill hai to chalo i can at least do this but no you do that no so and i will check up on you because you have so much love and i i i see that with every with everybody you interacting with i feel like i i i told you this like whenever i see you i see love and uh it's so it's i don't know this is why i can talk to you because you make me feel that way that i can talk to you you don't always feel like you can talk to some like you know everybody who comes your way but with you it is different um you've seen me at my most vulnerable as well so these conversations seem like i i feel like i'm talking to not just uh, somebody who I, who i immensely look up to but also like a friend like a sister and somebody who will always look out for me so thank you for being that for sure for thank sure you. and i feel a uh, privilege to hold that space in your life so thank mm-hmm. you very much thank you <laughs> 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 yeah please <laughs>